Dear manufacturers of machinery and electrical equipment, BIS has issued the Machinery and Electrical Equipment Safety Omnibus Technical Regulation Order 2024, commonly referred to as OTR 2024. As this is a new regulation, there are a lot of confusion in the industry and we are bringing up this video to provide some clarity. First, let's begin by understanding what this QCO is all about. We will be covering most of the major points. Next, the classification of standards into Type A, Type B and Type C. We will analyze under which of the following your product will fall and analyzing all the products covered under this order. And finally, the key questions that the industry is raising. I am your host, Bastin Bini, representing MindSync. MindSync is a professional organization providing compliance, consulting, legal and advisory services. Let's begin by understanding the OTR order. The Machinery and Electrical Equipment Safety Omnibus Technical Regulation Order 2024 is a comprehensive regulation introduced by the Ministry of Heavy Industries Government of India. Moving on, this order is issued on August 28, 2024. This regulation aims to enhance the safety and quality standards of machinery and electrical equipment that are manufactured, imported, distributed, sold, hired or leased within India. Basically, it covers everything. By mandating adherence to the specified Indian standards, the OTR 2024 ensures that machinery and electrical equipment meet strict safety and quality benchmark. The goal to protect consumers, workers and the environment from potential hazards associated with these products. Moving to an another important point, the effective date. This regulation is mandatory from August 2025 this year. This order falls under Scheme X of BIS. Scheme X is a conformity assessment framework introduced by PIS under the BIS Conformity Assessment Regulation 2018. It mandates certification for specific products to ensure compliance with the Indian standard. Let's now look into some of the important points of this order. The BIS OTR is a compulsory certification as you all know. Now let's read it line by line and understand it. Each machinery or electrical equipment as the case may be specified in the first schedule shall bear the standard mark under a license from the bureau. So this will be the mark that will be in your product. There are also certain conditions on the marking which are the standard mark shall carry the license number and any other reference to the specified requirement in a visible manner and shall be as specified in the license. If the standard mark cannot be applied on the product or the packing physically, it shall be given on the test certificate. Now let's continue. The standard mark under a license from the bureau or issued with a certificate of conformity in the case of machines or as the case may be. So basically manufacturers has two options here. One is a BIS license and the another a certificate of conformity. Let's understand both in detail. So PIS license is a demonstration of conformity of goods or articles to the specified requirement as per the relevant standard. And coming to certificate of conformity, the bureau may grant certificate of conformity instead of a license in case the product is not decided to be manufactured in a continuous basis. And in such a case, the manufacturer shall not be authorized to use the standard mark. So in case of certificate of conformity, you can go for it if you are planning to manufacture the product for a certain period or a certain purpose, which is not on a continuous basis. So if you are going, so if you are planning to manufacture and sell on a continuous basis, BIS license is the go. And the another point in COC certificate of conformity is that you can't use the standard mark we have seen earlier. Okay, now let's move forward. Prior to obtaining license or certificate of conformity of this order, manufacturer of each machinery or electrical equipment as the case may be specified in the first schedule shall register with the BIS. So before obtaining the license or the COC, there's an another step. First, the manufacturer need to register with the BIS and the registration is currently open. If you have any queries regarding the registration process, 
you can just call us or mail us through the details provided in the description below now let's see the exceptions of bis otr okay the first exemption products already covered under bis order under section 16 of the bis act 2016 which basically means if any of your product which are already bis certified then this order does not apply next machinery and equipment manufactured only for export if you are manufacturing a product in india and the only purpose is to export them and no sale in india the third point construction equipment covered under central motor vehicle rules cmvr 1989 issued by the ministry of road transport and highways so this exemption is when any of your construction equipment which are already under a cmvr license then you are exempted from applying under this order now let's move forward and understand the type a type b type c standards under this order let's begin with type a they provide the basic concepts principles for design and general guidelines that apply to all machinery so we can say type a as the general one which can be applied to multiple machineries think of type a as the foundation ensuring that safety is built into your product from the very start this includes performing risk risk assessment and incorporating essential protective measures during the design phase next type b standards these are group safety standards that shall address specific safety aspects of particular type of safeguards common to many machines in general type b is a safety standard for example they may cover standard requirements for emergency stops interlocking system or installation of guarding machines they provide a set of guidelines that can be applied across various machines ensuring a uniform level of protection next type c these are machine specific safety standards type c provide detailed and precise safety requirements tailored to the unique hazards and operational conditions of a particular machinery or a group of machines for complex or specialized equipment these standards outline exact technical requirements to ensure safe and compliant operation now let's begin by type a standard is 16819 2018 under bis otr 2024 is 16819 2018 is the essential safety standard that ensures every machine is designed with protection in mind from the very start this standard requires thorough risk assessment and the integration of key safety features during the design for example liquid handling pumps these need to be designed with emergency shutdown features and robust guarding to prevent accidents during operation compressors must be engineered to safety manage high pressure with built-in safety controls and excavators must be equipped with emergency stop robust guarding of moving parts and ergonomic operator controls for maximum safety in heavy duty operations moving forward let's analyze the products covered under type c let's begin by all type of machines including machines for public work and building and machinery and mechanical appliance having individual function not specified or include elsewhere in chapter 84 of hsn code and their assemblies sub assemblies or components so this table shows the hsn codes for which the manufacturers need to obtain certification under the order so here we have listed some of the few products from the industry so to check whether these machines fall under the otr and which schedule and indian standard just get in touch with us as we are unable to cover all the aspects in this short video moving forward all types of gear and gearing, tooth wheels, chain pockets, transmission elements, ball or roller screw, gearbox and speed changers including torque converters. These are the HSN code which all of these products are following. So if you are manufacturing under any of these HSN code then the certification is required. So here we have listed a few machines to check whether these machines fall under the OTR and which schedule and the Indian standard applying to the product get in touch with us we'll be happy to help you at the every stage and every process of the certification moving forward 
all types of machinery for construction, earth moving, mining and all types of cranes. We have combined the construction equipment and cranes here as both falls under the similar industry. So this is a table representation of type A, type B and type C standards applicability. So under type A, all the following HSN codes are mandatory for construction equipment and cranes. The general safety regulation would be 16819-2018. Under type B, earth moving machinery guards is a standard unit to note. And under type C, scrapers, graders, cable excavators, mobile cranes, loader cranes, traveling and gantry cranes need to be applied under type C. These are some of the other industry products. To check whether these machines fall under OTR and which schedule and Indian standard, just get in touch with us. So these are some of the other products of the HSN code. So if any of your products falling under it or have any queries, you can just contact us for clarity. Moving forward, all types of metal cutting machines tool covered under the heading HSN 8456 to 8461 or their assemblies, sub-assemblies or components. So these are the various products falling under the order. The HSN code under type A are 8456, 8457, 8458, 8459, 8460 and 8461. Under type C the following Indian standards applies. These are few, these are few industry products to check whether these machines fall under OTR and which schedule and Indian standard related. Get in touch with us. Next, all type of machinery for working rubber and plastics. These are the HSN code. 8477 is the HSN code for the product falling under IS 20430. 2020, we have listed some of the trending industry products to check whether they are falling under the OTR, which schedule and Indian standard applicable, get in touch with us. All types of pumps for handling liquid and liquid elevators. So these are the HSN codes for pumps handling liquid. Any of your products falling under this particular HSN code, then remember your product might be falling under the OTR. To check your particular products are falling or not, you can get in touch with us. These are some of the industry products. We have mentioned it below. To know about their applicability, you can just contact us as we are not unable to cover every aspect in this video. So moving forward, all types of diesel generator and their assemblies or sub-assemblies are components. So here are type A and type C standards. The HSN code is 8502 and 8503. There are certain Indian standards like control gear and switch gear, emergency power supply to safety services. These are some of the industry products. To check whether these machines fall under the OTR and which schedule and Indian standard get in touch with us. Next let's understand type B standards. The following are the ergonomics standards under the auto. Next we have the pressure sensitivity protective devices standards under the auto. and next the following are the emission of airborne hazardous substance standards under the auto. Next let's move to the key questions the industry is raising. To know their answers in detail or tailored to your own specific needs you can contact us. You can contact us from the details below in the description. The first question which are many confused of is that are these compliance requirements applicable only to heavy machinery or also on the components or subcomponents. Basically the question is does this act only applies to heavy machinery and the remaining are exempt. So moving to the next one. Clause 10 exempts construction equipment covered under the CMVR rule 1989. Fine. Issued by the ministry. What happens if an equipment falls under both this order? Okay. Which regulation take precedence? Moving to the next question. How to check whether a construction equipment falls under the CMVR rules 1989? So the next fourth question would be the order comes into force one year after its publication. What support or guidance will be provided to manufacturers? during this transition period to ensure compliance a very good question these are the questions we collected from various industries we have received a lot of mails and calls regarding all of these questions and we thought it would be better to acknowledge all of those questions in this video moving to the fifth one if a manufacturer produces only sub assemblies or components for example gears casting do they need to obtain certification 
or is it the responsibility of final assembler? For example, if I am a manufacturer of casting and supplying it to a diesel generator manufacturer, will the OTR QCO be applicable to me as well? Sixth one, if a company outsource the manufacturing of machinery or components to a third party, who is responsible for ensuring compliance with the order? Seventh question, if a machine falls under multiple standards mentioned in type B, type B and type C schedules, how should a manufacturer decide which standard to prioritize for conformity. For example, earth moving machinery crepers fall under type E IS 819 in type B 3457 2003 and also in type C 17055 part 7 2020. How to decide which IS be applicable? Eight question. If we are manufacturing heavy machinery which are not mentioned under type B and type C, so do we have to take BIS under type A? For example, forklift is not mentioned in type B and type C. So is BIS to be taken under type A only? So the next question would be, if we are manufacturing multiple heavy machineries which are not mentioned under type B and type C and get covered under type A, can all the machines be grouped together? in one application for IS 16819. Next question, what are the specific labeling and marking requirements under Scheme X of the Conformity Assessment Regulation? We have mentioned a few in the beginning of the video. If you haven't seen, you can just recheck it. So the next is the 11th one. Some HS code listed in the schedule cover broad category of machinery. How can manufacturers confirm that their specific product falls within the scope of the order. Twelfth question, our HS code are there in the order. But if there is no specific Indian standard mentioned for a product in the order, which standard will be applicable? For example, under type C, all types of gears and gearing tooth wheels, chain pocket transmission element balls or roller screw gearbox and speed changers including torque converters against which IS number are not mentioned. In this case, which IS to consider? Moving forward, question 13. Does the absence of specific standard mean IS 16819 2018 applies by default or what is the purpose of referencing this standard? Question 14. Since BIS certification is factory based, if we are already have a product certified under IS 16819 in our factory, can we apply the same standard for another product manufactured at same facility? Moving to the final question, if a machinery falls under type B and type C both, which types should take precedence? For example, interlocks are falling under type B and in type A and not in type C. Here, do we have to take BIS for type B? or type A or both. These are only a few questions. If you have any more questions or want to know answers of any of these questions, you can just contact us. We are here to help you throughout the stage in registration, licensing, certification. Thank you.